Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Alessandro Bancio came up with a really fun technique to make a jelly looking text and I'm gonna walk you through it. So here's our text. And the one thing we wanna make sure we're doing is have all these text pieces overlapping each other. So if we did have too much horizontal spacing, make sure that they're brought in so they're overlapping each other. And we're gonna add a lot more subdivision to this and we want it to be a nice uniform subdivision. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the new remesh, which is a very new feature. I think it came out in S26 and it's a really, really handy tool. We're going to increase the mesh density all the way up to 500 and we'll check on adaptive count and turn that up to 100. And you can see that we have a really nice even subdivision now. And we're going to go ahead and use some of the volume tools now to add some more uh, subdivision and make it a little bit smoother as well. We're going to use the volume builder. We'll put the remesh in the volume builder. We're going to change the voxel size to two and we'll click on SDF smooth one time. And this looks like it should work. We're gonna put this into a final measure here, the volume measure, and that's about all we need to do for the text. We have lots of subdivisions and it's a bit smoothed out. So it's a good start to make it look like jelly. All right, so we're gonna uh, highlight the volume measure and hit C to make it editable. And here is our final polygon object that we're gonna work with. All right, so we're gonna make that jelly effect using the jiggle. So we'll put in a jiggle deformer inside of that volume measure, that text, we'll just call this text. And we're also going to use a turbulence effect. So we'll add a turbulence. All right, so in the turbulence, we're gonna increase the strength a lot to 100, and we'll increase the scale quite a bit to 60. And we're gonna change the mode from acceleration to aerodynamics wind. And now we need to have this turbulence affect the jiggle. So we'll go to the forces tab in the jiggle and we'll drag that turbulence into there. And in the jiggle effect, I think we'll leave most of this the same, but maybe we'll increase the drag to 100% and we'll check on local and we'll hit play and see what this looks like. So already we have a very cool effect and just by using this, you can probably get some pretty uh, nice results. So this is an awesome effect, but right now it's, a, it's affecting the entire piece of text. Let's say that we want it to only affect um, the outside part of this text so that the actual font is a little bit less distorted. And we're gonna show you a technique which is applicable in a lot of different ways and that is using a vertex map in fields. So we're gonna right click on this text and actually let's go to the first frame so that's not distorted yet. And we're going to go to other tags and then vertex map. All right, in vertex map, we're gonna be using the fields. So we'll check on use fields, which will open up this fields tab. And let's delete this freeze to start with we're going to actually reference the text object itself. So we'll drag the text into here. And if we click on it, we can now access curvature, which is the ability to isolate the outer parts of this text. And we can play with that radius to increase that a little bit. And now we can see that it's really easy to make a vertex map based on the curvature of this text, which is really, really cool. All right, we're gonna make it pretty obvious uh, We'll make all this red part so that the jiggle does not affect it and it will only affect the yellow parts. All right, so we have our vertex set up and now we just have to use that map inside of the jiggle. So let's go to that jiggle and under the object, under say stiffness, we have this map slot. We can drag this vertex map into and then it will respect this vertex map. We can also go to the forces tab and there's a map under here, so we could drag it into here. And finally, there's a fields tab, which we can drag our vertex map into. And if we drag it into all those slots, basically the jiggle is only going to show up on the yellow or the orange parts, and where it's pure red, it will not affect it at all. So let's hit play and see what that looks like. And you can see that it started out okay, but then it started getting pretty crazy. And that's because it's calculating this vertex map as it's animating. And we don't want that. We only want it to calculate on the first frame. So let's go back to that vertex map under that fields tab. We're going to add a freeze effect. So we'll add freeze and let's click freeze. And that way it's going to freeze this vertex map on the uh, first frame and it's not gonna continually animate as it goes. And then we'll hit play and we'll see what that looks like. And right now you can see that the edges, anything that was yellow, 
is having that nice jiggle effect, but these parts that are red are staying the same and not being affected by the jiggle. And there is a nice kind of a gradient ramp into the red so it's not so harsh, but this is a great way to isolate part of your text so that the font is still legible, but you're able to um, define parts of it that you want to be affected by different deformers. And that's all courtesy of a vertex map using fields and then piping the object itself into there. So it's a really great technique and I think there's a lot of ways that you could apply this. I hope you found that useful and learned some new techniques. Thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.